Hello, welcome back to Leah's Wholesome Bakes. So today I'm going to be making dinner rolls for the holidays. I figured this would be a great time for you all to have a um, good recipe to use, a wholesome recipe to use for the holidays when you're baking your rolls. Um, I took this off the internet and I tweaked it a little bit, made it wholesome by using whole wheat flour and cutting the sugar in half. So follow along with me and hopefully you can bake these at home. So we are gonna start off with our ingredients. One cup of whole milk, a quarter cup of buttermilk, um, two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a half a cup of butter, which is one stick, three and a quarter cups of white whole wheat flour, two tablespoons of wheat gluten, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, one egg at room temperature, and one teaspoon of salt. So let's get started. First, we are going to add our one cup in a saucepan. We're gonna heat all of our wet ingredients in the saucepan. So we're gonna add our one cup of whole milk here. and then our quarter cup of buttermilk. And as I said before, when you wanna, you don't have buttermilk or if you wanna make homemade buttermilk, you can add a couple of teaspoons of vinegar to the um, cup first, to the measuring cup first, and then fill up the remaining of your measured cup, in this case, it's a quarter of a cup, with um, the milk. So I have the, the whole milk and the buttermilk that I just added. And now I'm just going to add the brown sugar, the honey, I love these small spatulas, they are so adorable and so handy. And you can find these anywhere, online, in the stores. The stores are so baker friendly now because I think everybody and their mom is baking, like literally in their grandma. So, um, or I should say the grandmas are passing down the recipes to the moms and the moms passing down the recipes to the, to the daughters and sons actually. So yes, you can find these little tiny spatulas anywhere for pretty much um, during, anyway. So we're adding the honey, and then we're going to add the one stick of butter. I have started using better quality butter just because um, it's just better for us to, to use uh, a quality butter, quality ingredients. Just, I mean, the whole um, idea behind Wholesome Bakes is to just use quality, ingredients that are better for our bodies and our bodies love natural products and i'm going to let this heat up until about 115 degrees and make sure the butter is all melted <laughs> welcome back so eli decided to join me well i asked him to join me so he could show off his new apron and the hat that he got for um baby. do you like it <laughs> He's going to assist me in um, adding the dry ingredients together and mixing them. So here we have just a one and a quarter cups of the flour, the white whole wheat flour. And then we're going to add the yeast. Put that in there. Good. All right. And then we're going to add the wheat gluten. Uh -oh. The wheat gluten is what helps the um, whole wheat flour to rise better. And it also make, gives it a more chewy texture. So that's why we add the wheat gluten. You can leave it out if you want to. It's not a big deal. Oh, we have to no, no. We're going to mix these together. Go ahead and mix those together. Make sure it doesn't fall out. Okay. 
And here I have the liquid ingredients. They heat it up to about 115 to 120 degrees. And I'm going to pour those in here now. Okay. Carefully pour that in there. Slow, slow, slow. So it doesn't spill. Mmm, that smells wonderful. <laughs> Already. What? It smells good. It smells a little It is warm. It's true. And then we have our egg is at room temperature. I always use cage-free eggs and organic whenever I can. Mom, I'm gonna put the eggs in there. You can put the egg in, in there right now. Until you put all the Then we're going to add the salt. Salt. Sorry, a little bit. Stir, stir, stir. All right, so now we're gonna add the rest of the flour. This is the rest of the two. There was three and a quarter cups of flour. We started off with one and a quarter cups, and this is the remaining flour, which is two cups. So we're gonna gradually add it in as, as he stirs. After we add the flour, we let this dough rest for 20 minutes. And the reason why we add an extra 20 minutes is so that, because we're using all whole wheat flour, we're allowing the, whole, the flour to um, absorb the yeast and the liquids um, for that 20 minutes, and then it'll allow a, a better rise also. So I have, um, I use a shower cap. I started using a shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot, a lot of other people say, it's easier to use a shower cap um, when you're letting your just your when you're letting your go rest. And this is a clean, never been used shower cap that I use for my go. It's been about 20 minutes, maybe 20, 25 minutes, and now I am going to roll this out onto a floured surface. I have a half a cup of flour here. I measured it out just because I like to, I mean, I weighed it just because I like to um, know how much flour and how much of the ingredients I'm using because it's just good to know um, that you're not overusing or you're not over flouring your dough. So I put probably about maybe a tablespoon down on here. You might use more, but you put it down to the, flour surface and get all of the dough that you can out of the bowl. Make sure you have clean hands, of course. Get some flour on my hands and start to knead. So I needed this for about five minutes, and now it's nice and smooth and ready to rest for another two hours. One and a half to two hours until it's doubled in size. And I'm gonna place it in this greased bowl. I washed out my bowl and um, sprayed it with some oil, nonstick oil. And since it has plenty of oil in the bat and the dough, um, you don't really need to spray the, the dough, but I usually just turn it over anyway into the, the pan spray. Pat it into a ball, place my shower cap back on here, and I usually like to take a picture of it, just to watch as it doubles in size to see how big it's going to get, or to make sure that it is actually doubled the size. 
Because sometimes it takes um, two hours, sometimes it takes one hour. It really depends on the temperature inside. I think this is probably going to take about uh, maybe one and a half hours to double in size. So I'm going to let that sit and I will be back to shape them into rolls. Welcome back. Uh, my mom joined me. I had to ask her to join me. <laughs> Actually, I didn't have to. I just um, haven't been asking her lately. I was like, I need to ask her to help me again. Hey. So <laughs> here we are. She's going to help me divide the dough into 20 pieces. This is how it's risen. It's about doubled in size. We have our 9 by 13 pan here that I sprayed lightly with a non-stick spray. And we're going to begin, I'm gonna punch down this dough, just deflate it. Turn it out onto the counter. And we will begin to make rolls. And you can um, actually color it. So to make it, you just form it into a ball. And there's so many different ways that you can make that you can make rolls or form rolls. Really, mm -hmm. rolls small, lot of money to buy. Can't you? You pinch the bottoms to make it smooth. Huh. See, I should know this. <laughs> I should know this because I used to make rolls. And then you do four or um, five rolls of four. So you do a couple more. And we'll continue to do this and then show you the finished results. So we divide them up, um, four rows of, no, five rows of four. And we got 20 rows out here out of it. And um, I will take a picture of this so you can see close up. And we will put our clean shower cap over it. Oh, we also brush them with butter too because they won't dry out with melted butter. The shower cap over it and let them rest for about another hour, hour and a half. And they should double inside size again and then you can place them in the oven. The rolls are out of the oven and they smell, oh, amazing. Oh my gosh, yum. So they've cooled off a little bit. And I brushed them with butter. So I'm gonna take them out of the pan. Oh yeah, they look wonderful. Perfectly brown, perfectly round. Just take them all out. Now, I have had some fiascos with rolls in general. I just, for some reason, well, actually, I know exactly why. But they weren't rising right, and then when I would bake them, they would be underdone at the bottom, and in between, like the ones on the outside would be done, and the ones in the middle would still be doughy. And I could not figure out why. So, um,. The last time I actually tried this recipe, the same exact thing happened. So I did some research. Come to find out, I had them too close together. So you notice how um, when my mom and I put these rows in here, it was four per row, four po per row, R-O-W, four rows per row, and then there was five rows of um, rows. Uh, so, but before the last time I did this, I did five rolls per row, and they were way too squished together, and it didn't allow the um, space to rise. 
And then because of that, they didn't get cooked all the way um, while they were in the oven. So these cooked at, these cooked um, for about 14 minutes. See the bottom of it is golden brown. Bottom of it is golden brown and the top is golden brown also. That is the perfect roll. So here we have 100% whole wheat rolls. And I'm going to taste it. Mmm. Mmm. I wish you could taste this. So good. So good. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. These rolls are delicious. Um, I'm going to freeze these and probably save them for Thanksgiving or another time when we have something that will um, will go very good with these rolls. Thank you for joining me. Bye.